How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Luke and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Historia, a puzzle platformer with a hand-drawn art style which has a unique gameplay mechanic which sees you using magical pins to lock sections of the level in place in order to solve puzzles and progress through the game. Now this one was published by Red Deer Games who were kind enough to provide me with a key for this review so let's get right on into it and see what Historia has to offer. And don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date with all my latest content and reviews. So story wise, I don't really want to go into too much depth as the story is revealed as you work through the game, but it essentially revolves around a young boy's journey to save his father's life. Finding his old man wounded and on the verge of death, the boy is handed a magical thumbtack before setting off to discover the source of the parasitic mask which appears to be draining his father's life force, and guided by the spirits of the forest dwellers, the boy's journey leads him into dark and strange locations as the truth about the mask's origins are slowly revealed. Now interestingly, the game doesn't contain any voice acting or dialogue, and instead the story is delivered via a series of short rhymes or poems, but I actually really liked this, as I thought it was a rather unique way of telling the story, and it didn't interrupt gameplay, but it still did a good job of explaining things. So gameplay in Hostoria is kept pretty simple, and it sees you working your way through the game's linear storyline, travelling from one screen to the next, with each screen usually containing some sort of platforming challenge for you to navigate through, and you'll also encounter the odd puzzle here and there. Controls are also kept simple, allowing us to move with the left thumbstick, crawl while holding down on the thumbstick and jump with the B button, and the L and R buttons are used to apply the magical thumbtacks to objects, which forms a part of the game's puzzle elements. Now in general, Hostoria is not a difficult game, and so you shouldn't have much issue when it comes to progression, even if like me, you really suck at platformers. As well as some simple platforming, you'll also encounter things like these eyeballs whose gaze you need to avoid, and projectiles which you need to dodge around, but there's not actually any combat in the game, and overall these don't offer too much of a challenge, and they just really stand to add a little variety to gameplay. I'd say that the majority of players will likely find a story to offer more of a casual platforming experience, and while there are a few optional side areas which offer a little more challenge and reward you with collectible spirit creatures, the main challenge with Historia, and my first real criticism of the game, comes from the actual platforming mechanics and the way that they've been programmed. Jumping into a vertical surface, such as a wall or the side of a platform, will end up seeing your character sticking to it, and this can become pretty frustrating, especially when you get further into the game and have to be more precise with your jumping and movement. When it comes to the game's puzzles, while there is a reasonable amount of variety to them, I did find that there was more of a focus on platforming than anything else. Some of the game's puzzles require things like pulling levers or pushing blocks in order to access certain areas, and others require you to use the aforementioned magic thumbtack to lock objects or the scenery in place. And while I did enjoy the thumbtack related puzzles, I really didn't feel like the developer used it to its full potential. Firstly because I didn't feel like there were enough puzzles involving the mechanic, and secondly because, of the puzzles that there were, the majority involved sections of the scenery moving as you did, and they simply saw you holding things in place while you move to one location, before releasing it and moving back to another location, and then repeating the process to lower things like platforms or ladders. There were a couple of more interesting puzzles involving the thumbtack, but I would say that these were few and far between, and I just think that there was a lot more that could have been done with it. Overall though, while the platforming can be a little frustrating at times, and the puzzles were a little lacklustre, the gameplay in Hostoria is still pretty enjoyable. It's worth noting though that it's not a very long game, clocking in at around an hour, plus an extra half hour or so if you're trying to find and collect all of the hidden spirits, but it's well worth hunting all of these down if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about the game's development, and about some of the discarded assets. So at its core, Historia is primarily a puzzle platformer, though I felt that the game's art style did a really good job of adding an element of horror to the title by creating somewhat of a dark and disturbing atmosphere. While it's by no means the most impressive looking game on the Switch, I did really like the creepiness of some of the enemies, and it was the little details like the creatures that lurk in the background just watching you that really stood out to me. Now audio wise, I have to say that the soundscape in her story is pretty limited, and I couldn't really tell if this was intentional to keep things minimalistic, or if the budget was a little tight when it came to the sound design. 
We get a few simple sound effects which cover things like the mechanical sounds of switches, rock movements, portals and a few other things but that's about it. When it comes to the game's music, we only get a single audio track, which does last around 20 minutes or so and loops repeatedly, but I actually really liked the game's music and I found it had a kind of sad haunting quality to it which really fit with the game's atmosphere. Now on the performance side of things, Historia holds up pretty well, though despite its simple visuals I did still notice a few minor frame rate drops and one major drop when pulling this lever. Other than that though, the game performs pretty well on the Switch. When it comes to issues, I've already mentioned the janky platforming dynamics, but I did also get stuck in a couple of locations, like here when I pushed this arrow launcher too far and couldn't move it away from the wall, and on another occasion where instead of moving to the right, this platform just decided to continue upwards for some reason. Despite these issues though, the developer has clearly tried to deliver an engaging storyline with this one, as well as trying something a little different with the thumbtack puzzle mechanics, and though I do wish the game had more to offer when it came to the thumbtack puzzles and its overall playtime, I did still enjoy my time playing Historia. When it comes to my own personal rating of the game, I'm going to be giving Historia 3 out of 5 stars. If you're looking for something to fill a couple of hours with which won't tax your platforming or puzzle solving skills too much, then Historia might fit the bill. And if the asking price is still a little too steep for you, the game currently has a 35% launch discount. And so that just about does it for this review of Historia on the Nintendo Switch. Make sure to hit that like button if it helped you out, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comments section below, and if you haven't yet subscribed but enjoy the content that I'm putting out, then please consider doing so. For now though, I want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.